What's happening, Hoodlum Gang? Welcome back to my channel. This your boy, Hoodie from the Hood, a.k.a. your friend from that big old win, and I'm back at y'all with another video. But before we get started, if you happen to be new to the channel and you want to become a member of the Hoodlum Gang, all you got to do is hit that subscribe button, like the video, leave me a comment down below to let me know what you think about the content, share the video, hit that notification bell, tell a friend to tell a friend, and go on over to IG and follow me at Hoodie from the Hood. Now, before we get started, once again, I'm asking all of y'all to go on over to Hindu Unplugged Podcast and check out the interview I just did the other day. Dope conversation. Um, probably one of the best that I've had so far, honestly. And I don't know if because a lot of the content was about uh, my backyard. Um, of course, we spoke on trending topics. If you checked it out, let me know in the comments. If you haven't, go check it out. Come back, let me know in the comments. But, um, yeah, man, dope conversation, man. Hopefully, uh, me and Hindu could do some more um, content just, you know, chopping it up on uh, current events and uh, stuff that goes on in my city so people could get a lot more familiar who don't know um, what goes on out my way. Obviously, I'm not going to dive deep into certain um, political issues pertaining to the streets because that's just not what I do. If y'all do that, that's cool. That's why it leaves everybody uh, open to interpret and talk about it. You know what I'm saying? But um, anyways, go check me out on that podcast, man. Now, this video is actually something that I wanted to do maybe about two weeks ago, but I didn't got caught up and these back and forths and all this other stuff going on that I kind of put this off because I felt like the other stuff was priority. Um, but, and I was going to name the video something else, but I don't want to put the two individuals names in the, uh, in the title because I feel like they already had their differences and they already, uh, squashed it and hollered and, um, those two individuals was Spider Loke and OG Bam from Compton. Um, like I said, they already got over they they little uh, issue, but it ties into this because, like I said, I had a, a back and forth with Brick Baby and um, Poetic Flacco over what I said about Brick Baby, and uh, it was pertaining to how I felt like my city was being looked down upon or misrepresented now bam's problem with spider loke was spider loke spoke on bam city uh which is you know you could say a spider loke city too whether he banged there or not is he was born there uh still reside there went to school you know what i mean you could say it's his city too but i understand where bam is coming from on that um and and who am I to say how a, post, a person is supposed to react because obviously I reacted some type of what when I felt like somebody was speaking on my city that don't really know about my city. Spider Loke may know more about Compton than these individuals know about San Diego, but you, you get where I'm coming from. Um, and then the other reason I just seen uh, Young Ann Hefe, shout out to Young Ann Hefe. He had did a video about um, the treetops and the fruit towns and the, and the tea flats and that turned out to not be true or whatever the case is as far as them reaching out to the tea flats so i feel like i'll tie all this in uh and call it will black and brown ever have peace now i don't want people to think that this is some war like it may have been in certain spots notice i said certain not the whole california uh, in the 90s, in the 2000s, early 2000s, mid 2000s, whatever the case is. But it is something that I felt was necessary to talk about because there's a narrative going on that, and y'all can say, oh, you, you uh, caping for them because y'all neighborhoods, whatever the case is. There's a narrative going on that I've noticed multiple times when somebody get into it with Nina Boy or when they get into it with Spider Loke. The first thing they say is, uh, y'all scared of the F-13s or y'all scared of the Mexicans or y'all was quick to piece it up with the Mexicans and not other blacks and I personally just based on what I've seen on the internet and what these individuals who were involved came out and said that is false 
there's an abundance of evidence on the internet that will let you know that that is a false narrative. Um, so if you go back to the peace treaty and how it all came about, the East Coast is in the kitchens were actually talking about peace. That, that's the first peace treaty that was supposed to go on was them because people would be like, oh, y'all piece it up with them, but not your own people. But they was actually trying to piece it up with our people first. Uh, if you see on street TV, I think his name is, I think that's Porky from Kitchen. He been on there explaining how it came about. Uh, when Lil Doc was out, he explained the same story of how it came about. They was having peace talks in the, in the, it seems like the peace talks wasn't, um, getting done correctly or, or, or everybody wasn't on the same page on the kitchen side. Now, how the F-13s got pulled into that was because wherever the building was, which is supposed to be an old court slash juvenile, it was like a juvenile court cin uh, center, um, I believe it was like on Central or somewhere, somewhere over by the F-13s. And I think someone that was involved in those peace talks had a line on a big dog from F-13 who was incarcerated at the time. And they told them, like, basically, hey, this is what we're doing over here at this building. Just giving y'all a heads up so y'all know what we're doing right here. So it ain't no, you know, do say cool. I think a couple weeks go by or whatever. He tapped back in, said that it had been sitting heavy on his heart when he heard what the East Coast is in the kitchens is trying to do. And he said, hey. And this dude, I think, uh, was, was, I think that's the dude who ended up getting out because he was, uh, I think he had cancer. He was about to pass away. And it's something he wanted to see before he passed away. And he had the power to stop it. He said, hey, it's been sitting heavy on my heart. Who can I talk to to get us to have peace with the East Coasters? So the East Coasters didn't reach out to them. They reached out to them. Like I said, it had been going on long enough. Maybe it had died down, wasn't at the height that it was. It was mostly probably wall banging. I don't know. Um, and he reached out. Lil Doc said, I'm not with it. Some time went by. Lil Doc got on board. His homies wasn't with it. And then they did that whole back and forth. So when Lil Doc tells you that... He didn't fight and argued and cry with his homies about this because a lot of people didn't want to end it. Uh, I don't know how you could say they were scared or they were quick to piece up something with them when clearly the man told you that it wasn't easy. See, with them, whether they want to do it or not, you're going to listen. You're going to fall in line or that's your ass. So when the big dog say it's over, it's over. They don't give a fuck about how you feel individually. You're going to do it or you're going to be a marked man. It's harder to get blacks on that page because everybody has an opinion and everybody's boisterous and everybody, we really, not to down them, but we really are our own man when it comes to, nigga, I'm not with that. I understand nobody's bigger than the program, but you could have half the niggas not with it and that would really throw a wrench in, in your plan. You know what I mean? They don't have that choice. They don't have that luxury. They gotta, hey man, they, they said it's done, it's done. They said it's on, it's on. On top of that, we all know the story. We all know that there was something taken from them. I heard young Hefe say uh, it was a business move for them to end the war with the East Coasters. It was also a business move to crack that war off in the first place because of what was taken from them. So when something is done to you, it's up to you to be like, OK, I'm not mad no more. It's not up to me if I do something to you to be like, hey, man, you should stop being mad. So I just think that's a false narrative that I've seen. Like I said, when people get into it with uh, Spider Local or Nina Boy, that's the first thing they say, y'all niggas. And it's like, bro, it's, it's all this evidence on the Internet suggests that that's not true. You know what I mean? I don't think nobody won that. It seemed like they was both holding it down. Uh, some areas may have not been as prevalent as they was just based on the demographics changing. And that was prior to the war even kicking off. You know, so it's going to be a lot different if a war kick off and you already don't own no real estate over there. But for the most part, the East Coast has held it down. The F-13s held it down. That's that's it. Um, Now, 
the whole thing with the dude tagging up T-Flats and all that. And uh, allegedly it was said that the treetops had reached out to the T-Flats. And um, the T-Flats said, we don't do no peace and with power rules. And then young Aunt Hefe made a video and said, well, he people then reached out to him and said that was false. That the power rules, the treetops never reached out to the T flats. You know what I mean? Not to say they won't in the future, but they never reached out to them, so that was false. Um, and some people was like, Well, why would they reach out to them? Because they share the same hood. It's different when you're beefing with somebody five, ten minutes away as opposed to these niggas live on the same street or live on the next block. That's a whole different thing. Just like with the East Coast and the F-13s, that may have been more of a detrimental war than them beefing with somebody who they just beef with on paper, but it ain't been nobody's in 15, 20 years. Maybe some scuffles here and there, maybe some wall banging, but nigga, if it's actually going on, this should be the one that you should be trying to stop regardless. Like I could make peace with all the black hoods and Half these niggas ain't did nothing to us. We ain't did nothing to them in so long. It's damn near already a peace. Maybe a cold war or something. You know what I mean? So when you actively beefing with somebody more, I think that that's more of the route you should go for peace, regardless of skin tone. If I'm if if I get the treetops and the fruit towns, boom. And then the treetops and the T flats, had they reached out to them, they obviously didn't, but had they reached out to them, that would have made sense to me just based on that they are in the same hood and be on the same blocks or or whatever the case is, go to the same liquor stores. That's more detrimental than you beefing with this other crib hood, but they might they got their own liquor store, they might have their own schools that they go to, their own gas station. So I could understand why that would have been a choice over you know, another black hood, depending on the hood. You know what I mean? It seemed like the treetops main enemies is the T-flats and the fruit towns. So uh, had that been what they did, it would have made complete sense to me. Uh, I get it. You know, you want you want your people to piece it up first. But if this is more of an imminent threat than that, we'll get to that later. You know what I mean? That's just how I think. But will there ever be peace? That's how I got here because if the if the T flats uh, was never asked that, then their beef is going to continue on. Will there ever be peace between them two? I don't know. That's up for them to decide. That's up for uh, I don't know what's going on. I don't know when the last time an incident has taken place with them. It could have been yesterday. It could be today. It could have been last week. Uh, Young Ann had also said that when the treetops and the pyro took that picture that they was dissing the flats um when i saw that picture I, I i thought the f was for front hood but i guess it was for the flats you know what i mean so obviously the pyro still got that same energy towards the flats um like they do towards the cribs they was dissing both in the picture but that's my video man i just wanted to like i said that's something that i just wanted to that 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 narrative bothers me when people say that because this is how you get the 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 people from out of state in the comments talking about y'all scared of, because you got another black that's an older representative of this from his community saying that and it's like bro if you just look at all the that's not even how the peace treaty came about there was peace treating with other blacks first and i think old boy saw that like okay they've been beefing with the kitchens way longer than they've been beefing with us if they're willing to piece it up with them let me see and it worked and it's been peaceful ever since so congratulations to them on that and holding that treaty down and uh yeah man hopefully there's more to come man um also fip to the homie ks uh you know, it's a lot of stuff going on, man. And just uh, hopefully, you know, cooler heads can prevail and um, things could get on the right track. But that's my video for today, man. Uh, it's your boy Hoodie from the Hood, a.k.a. your friend from that big old end. Um, until next time, go check out that interview, man. And we got more interviews coming. We got more on the way, man. Stay tuned. Your boy Hoodie from the Hood, I'm out.